Okay, so raise your hand if in the last couple of days um, you spent about at least an hour on your phone. Okay, how about at least two hours? How about three? Yeah, see, it's, it's a lot. According to digital trends, people spend on average 4.7 hours each day on their phone. And within that time period, you're most likely to check your phone for social media about 17 times. I'm not here to tell you to stop using your cell phone anyway. In fact, cell phones and social media have become very beneficial in all sorts of aspects of our lives. Through my research, I found many different ways of how cell phones have revolutionized communication within society. It's been proven that cell phones and social media has actually improved the amount of political participation we have in our country, um, specifically within voting. With advancements in technology, we're able to talk with someone uh, thousands of miles away within just seconds. These tiny devices are helping globalize our enormous planet uh, by keeping more people connected and thus making our world feel smaller. Not only is communication evolving with our cell phones, uh, but it's also becoming easier to complete certain tasks. Thanks to our smartphones, we no longer have to have a bunch of separate devices to only do a single task. No longer do we need to lug around an MP3 player to listen to music. No longer do we need a calendar to keep track of important dates and upcoming events. And no longer do we need to hold a telephone or cell phone to keep, to keep in touch with our family and friends. Instead, all of these actions and more can be easily done with our small handheld device. This mic. <laughs> there are so many advantages that come with smartphones. Think about how many apps you've installed in your own device. Have you ever searched within the Apple Store or the Android market and not found what you're looking for? There are already millions of mobile applications out there with the goal of making our lives a little bit easier. There are, oh, sorry. Um, and if for some reason you can't find the app you're looking for specifically, why not just make it yourself? And that was the mission that I set for myself um, on this path of senior son. For my senior project, I decided to make a mobile phone application for our own National Honor Society here at Bow High School. At its current state, this app might not seem like much, um, and that's because it really isn't much. Um, all it is is a list of upcoming events with a couple of cool pictures for the club. But this is something that I'm still really proud of. Uh, when I look at this, I see so much potential for myself, uh, because making an app is not an easy task. It's not as simple as typing a few words into a document and clicking save. <coughs> There's a lot of coding that goes on in something like this, and it takes a lot of time and determination to complete it. I've never made an app before, so this is a whole new avenue for me, but it's something that I wish to continue and to continue to explore as I go on to college. I'm happy where I ended up, and I just hope I'll complete bigger and better uh, projects as I go into the future. <clears throat> but with all the great power comes great responsibility. So please do not throw caution to the wind when it comes to using social media services. There are a lot of problems that can arise from using the internet incorrectly. Oops. When I was an incoming freshman, I didn't have much going for me when it came to my social life. After school, I didn't hang out with friends, or at least not in person. All I would invest my time into was playing video games on my computer in my basement, <coughs> excuse me, and doing random things on my phone. I spent so much time alone without the company of others. This lack of a social life started to take a toll on me. I became very introverted, feeling like no one could understand me. Um, whenever I was in public, I'd always have my phone out and in my hand, act like I was actually doing something. But in reality, all I was doing was swiping left and right in my screen um, with no goal except to not drive any attention towards myself. I became very depressed and anxious about everything. I was in a very dark place. Eventually, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I met up with a group of really great friends that were very socially active. I started getting out of the house more, I began to share my feelings, and I was overall just a lot happier. But the reason for all this positive growth wasn't the fact that I met this great group of friends. It was more because I left behind my old life of relying so strongly on my phone and my computer. <laughs> there are so many difficulties that can arise from using your smartphone or other device irresponsibly. Firstly, it can be incredibly difficult to betray your feelings or opinion toward a matter through text. 
It's rather uncomfortable how easy it can be for someone to misinterpret your message. As a Huffington Post perfectly described it, positive messages seem more neutral, neutral messages seem more negative, and negative messages seem incredibly negative. <laughs> I find myself telling my mom or dad to be careful of how they text. My dad often puts an ellipsis or like three dots at the end of his text, and to me they seem very passive aggressive, but in reality it's just how he texts. As the technology becomes more and more advanced, it's becoming incredibly disturbing how difficult it can be to differentiate between what's real and what's not. When you're typing up a message for someone else, how do you truly know that you're talking to that person and that person alone? You could be talking to an automated machine or just someone totally different you never know. At this point in our lives, privacy is becoming a thing of the past. Let's say you're messaging the right person this time, but there could be a completely different third party listening in and reading all your conversation between the two and neither of you would ever know. <laughs> Have you ever felt that someone you're messaging is totally different from who they are in person? Since we don't often see the person receiving the text, we can be very, uh, we can, can be very easy to feel like you're in a more powerful position. People feel safe behind a computer screen where they're able to remain more anonymous and don't have to worry about the repercussions. This can lead to all sorts of issues like cyberbullying, sexual offenders, and stuff like that. One of the most difficult realities we face is how our online interactions can affect how we actually socialize from face to face. Like I had said about my past, it's really hard for me to feel normal in social situations. The internet is a completely different world where we don't have to worry about body language or a tone of voice. If someone's been in that world for too long, it can be like speaking to an alien. It can make them feel like the odd one out, or like the ugly duckling. Now you see, all this online miscommunication this world of misinterpretation creates a place of confusion. It gives name to what I like to call the World Wide Web of lies. It's so easy to lose track of who you really are and who you're really talking to. It's so easy to fall into this trance like so many others because it's a place where you feel safe. It's, um, but all it really does is just cause more problems for you in the future. There are too many stories of people, young people, hurting or even killing themselves because of what has been said over social media. But we need to adapt from that, and uh, if things are going to change, we need to have people stop living their life through social media and start taking advantage of what life truly has to offer. We need to get to a point where social media is not the heart of our social life. Our life is like a tree. Social media can't be at the base of this tree where everything relies on it. Instead, it needs to be more like a branch and can add more balance, but if the, tr the branch breaks off, um, it won't die. So, to sum up, sorry about that mic, um, please be mindful about how you and your loved ones use the internet. Um, do not in any means take it completely out of your life, but do not let it become your life. Thank you. And then, just a couple of thanks. Uh, I'd like to thank Mrs. Dobbin for being a very supportive and helpful senior seminar teacher. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Gage who helped me find one of my community connections, um, Seeds Technologies in Manchester. I'd like to thank Mr. Jakes for letting me help with the tech booth um, during 12th night performances. That was a lot of fun. Um, I learned a lot and met some really cool friends. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank Mr. Watson for being an incredible mentor. He's someone that I look up to and a teacher I found to be incredibly helpful. He's a great resource for anything in, uh, you might be looking for. He's always so positive and motivating. He took time out of his own day to come and talk to me about not only my project, but even personal parts of my life. Um, he's only been here for two years and I already feel like he's such an important part of the Bow High School staff. I cannot thank you enough for everything you've done uh, for me and everyone else here at the high school.